Hi everyone, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Albums and I have in a previous video done a walkthrough of this large six and a half by ten inch mini album. Now what is following on this video is the tutorial on how I made the mini album. I don't have measurements listed in the description box. I suggest you watch it through one time with a notepad and take notes on the measurements and then go through um, and then make it. I It just takes so long to make a video and I really don't have the time to sit and write out the measurements. I'm just trying to get a lot of good content out for you. So anyhow, if you want to see the walkthrough, the link is in the description box below. If you want to uh, make this mini album, the tutorial is following. Don't forget to like right now before you get any further. Subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out. And thank you so much for watching. All right, and here we go with the tutorial. All right, we're going to start with the covers. You will need two pieces of chipboard that are six and a half by ten, and one piece of chipboard that's three inches by ten. I wanted to have this is way bigger of a spine than I normally use, but I wanted to have lots of room for ephemera and all different things. Now to cover that, you'll need your cardstock, and I'm using the olive color artisan cardstock. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful color, and it will go very nicely with a mother's love. So you need it one inch bigger on all four sides, so two inches bigger on both sides. What I mean is a two inches bigger than six and a half, so that's eight and a half, and two inches bigger than ten, so that's twelve. So you'll need to cover a six and a half by ten and eight and a half by twelve. For the spine, to cover the spine, you'll need an inch and a half for each side and one inch on the top and bottom. So an inch and a half on the each side is three inches, so it's six inches, and one inch top and bottom is an extra two, so it's six by twelve. And then go ahead and cover them with uh, score tape. I normally use glitter glue for most other purposes when I'm making a mini album, but this is the lay flat cover method designed by Tamara from Country Craft Creation Creations. And as she says, if you use glue, you have to use so much of it so you don't get any bubbling. It's important that your covers don't bubble. All right, let us start with one of the covers. And I am using my scoreboard for this. And I am also using these spacers. Now these are available at Country Craft Creations. These pink ones are one inch spacers and the yellow is one and a half. We just need the one inch spacer for the cover. So again, we're taking an eight and a half by 12. I am taking and making sure the cardstock is up to the top and to the side. And then I'm taking the spacers and pushing them up to the top and to the side as well. Then I've already burnished the um, score tape real well. And you can use pieces of it. It doesn't have to be one whole sheet. All right, so I'm again making sure my spacers to the top and my cardstock is to the top and I'm going to put this up to the side and then go up to the top and push it down. And then it's real important to burnish real well. And what I'm going to do is do one of these and then I'll do the other one off camera but I'll go back and do the spine because that's going to be done a little differently. I'm taking my bone folder and I either put the edge right up against the chipboard or you can find the edge and go all the way down. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put 
fold the cardstock down onto my surface and push down so the edge of the chipboard is right down on my surface and then fold it and bend it and then I'm going to burnish real well especially on the edges and I'll turn it over and burnish here so I'll do the same to the other side fold and burnish and then I'll do the same for the short sides and the other short side and I'll do this side okay so we have our cardstock on um, and you can see there are I'll turn it this way so I can't go any higher well I guess I can with my camera I'll, I'll do that so what we have trying to move things out of the way you can see there are four squares on each of the corners and we're going to simply cut them off you just follow that score line and cut off each of those four squares. If you haven't tried this method, you should at least try it once and, and see if you like it. Now, some people like it because it's a clean look and other people have been doing it a certain way and they go back to doing it that way. And that's fine, whatever works for you. But um, it, you owe it to yourself, at least try something new at least once. Okay, now I'm taking my long blade scissors and I'm going to take the top blade. Well, first what I'm going to do is pick this up and fold down my cardstock. Then I'm going to put the top blade against the cardstock. And you see there is this small, it's not an indentation. What is it when it comes out? It's not an outdentation either. But anyhow, there's a small piece that I'm going to cut off. You can't cut too much if you have your scissors up against the chipboard. It just won't let you. And it's just taking off a sliver. So that way, and I'm going to turn it completely over and do the other side. So when we do it this way, you're not ever going to have any overhang of the cardstock getting in the way for when you um, fold everything over. I mean, you can see it's about a sixteenth of an inch that comes off. Not very much. All right, now we go back to our glitter glue. And I have mine in my uh, little glitter glue container. That way it stays down and it's ready to go. And there's also a little magnet up front here. And that's where my pin stays, so I never lose it. I did a tutorial on that, and I'll put a link up above. So I'm going to first take a um, a, a bead of glitter glue and it's art glitter glue. It has no glitter. It's just a good glue. And I'm going to take a bead and go along the car, the chipboard just right along the edge of the chipboard. And then I'm going to add some more up to to the edge of it. Then I'll take my bone folder and I'm going to push my cart stock up. So it's going to go at a right angle straight up. But as you do, push it against the chipboard and you can see it's going to have all of the glue come out, all the excess glue come out. And then I'm going to take my fingers and fold this over. And make sure that the glue um, just gets all over the chipboard and it'll just give you a nice even uh, hold. So we'll do the same with the other side. So glue along the edge and make sure you get to the very edge of the cardstock you know right here don't skimp there or else um, 
Well, eventually you'll cover it, but I like to make sure that it's going to stay. So again, I'm going to burnish real well, and that will get the glue to adhere to the chipboard. It doesn't take much. I guess I got some glue on here, but that's okay. That'll be covered. It doesn't take much. You don't need a lot of uh, the glitter glue to hold. All right, we'll do the same here. And again, make sure you get enough up on the edge where the cardstock is already. Go up, smear it in. And there we go. Now you may see some seeping out here. And so what I do is take a, I call it a baby wipe, but they are wipes that are not meant for babies. And I just pulled, what I've done ahead of time is I've washed it in my sink, tried to get all the excess lint off and then let it air dry. And you can use it over and over. Once it gets all filled with glue, then that's when you throw it out. All right, I'm adding glue, especially to the edge and all over. So there we go. Now I'm going to wipe off my bone folder because it all came out there. But that is all I need to do. I'm going to clean that off. And so there is our beautifully covered book, book cover. I'm going to take the edge of my bone folder and go all along the edge of my newly covered album cover. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. But before I do, I'm going to show you what we do to cover the spine. It's a little bit different, not much, just a little. Let's go ahead and pull in our scoreboard. And the scoreboard's fabulous because it helps you get a nice straight um, adhesion. Is that the right word? All right, I'm going to put the one inch at the top and the one and a half inch at the side. I'm going to pull off my backing paper of my score tape. They sell sheets of score tape at Country Craft Creations. I always grab some whenever I'm doing a mini album. All right, and again, I'm making sure the paper is up to the top and to the side. And I'm gonna put my spine piece chipboard against it and up at the top. And there we go. Perfect inch and a half on both sides and one inch on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to do the same. Find where the chipboard is. And you could just do it this way. And um, don't cut it yet, though. Oops, let me push this just to get a good straight burnish. Okay. Now we are going to cut the rectangles, not squares this time. We'll cut the rectangles, so do the same as you did before.
Okay, now there are a couple of different ways. I've moved my camera up, so if it looks a little different, that's why. Um, but this is the way that, this is the way that I do it. So again, glue, and we're going to glue this down, but we're not going to glue the other sides down. So don't jump ahead to do that. I'm actually going to put the glue on here because it's a small area. I can work it fast. Oops. So again, push this up against the chipboard and fold it down. If you get glue coming out, just clean it up. And then what I like to do is turn it upside down and push my bone folder up against it so there is a, a easy to see delineation right where the chipboard is it just goes right up to the edge that doesn't help you but anyhow so there's that all right i'm going to go ahead and do the other cover and we'll get back all right, so I've got both covers covered. And here is our spine. And I am putting this on my scoreboard with the edge there, and it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. Oh, but before I actually put it on the scoreboard, I'm gonna run a bead of glue about an eighth of an inch away from where the chipboard is. I'm using my spacer to help. I'm trying to make sure it's centered on here so I can draw a straight line because I'm not good at drawing a straight line. So you can see where the chipboard ends and then there is the bead of glue. And I will fill this in. There will be other means of making sure this is adhered. This isn't the only one. All right, so I'm making sure it's up to the top and to the side, and then I'll take the cover, and the outside is going to face up. There's the inside, there's the, the outside of the book, and the same with the spine. And I'm just gonna pull this over till it goes down, and then I push real hard you'll see this is raising say so that goes up when this is in place I'm gonna move this out of the way for a sec and burnish and I'm gonna do the same to the other side but now, of course, I've got this on here. So I just want to make sure it's straight at the top because I can't put it to the side, of course. I'll do my little bead of glue thing. And if you can draw a straight line with your glue, you don't need something to run your bead of glue along. You don't want the glue right next to where the chipboard meets the um, cardstock. You want it about an eighth of an inch away. I'm probably a little more on this one, but that's okay. And then I'll fill this in. Push this up against the top of my scoreboard. And then push this down. Okay. And that is good. So I'll go ahead and burnish on this side. And that is the beginning of our cover. 
Now you'll see this is sort of a little wobbly. And that's okay. We're going to fix that now. Is this piece good? I have a leftover piece. You want to have at least an inch on each side. So I need at least a five inch piece. This is about three. This is a six inch piece. This will work. So at least an inch. You can have more. So cut it down to the height of the book. So that's 10 inches. So I'm going to cut this down to 10 inches. And then we're going to glue this onto here. All right, so I've put glue all over it. I'm going to put this down towards the bottom. Before I push it down, I want to make sure it's even, and it is. So I just push it down with my hands, and now I'll use the bone folder just to make sure that glue gets distributed all over. This piece that I just put on the out on top of this will help hold it. Now I'm not going to fold it yet. I will fold it after this is dry. Next I'm going to work on the hinge. Okay, to make the hinge, uh, you will need a piece of cardstock eight and three quarters by 12. We're going to have five pages in this mini album. Now it's going to be pretty easy to score. You're going to start at two inches and go to nine inches and score every half an inch. So let's get started. Start at two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half. I'm just counting along just so there's some audio while you're scoring. Six and a half, well, eight and a half, nine. <laughs> okay, so now what we need to do is fold our hinges. Uh, and the best way to do this is identify what is your hinge. You can write on it with a piece of chalk, but here's a hinge, here's a hinge, that's a gusset. Two hinges, two pieces, and then a gusset. Hinge, hinge, gusset. So now we're going to score on that center score line in between those two hinge pieces. So just fold that. And when you're folding, make sure the paper is straight on the sides. So you make sure on the right and the left side it's straight. The worst thing about, the worst thing you can do is have a wonky hinge. So make sure you're folding it straight. And I'm just going to fold in the center of the two pairs of half inch score lines that make the hinge. So I will go through and fold all these. This is a good opportunity to make sure everything is straight. And then I take my bone folder and burnish. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and make sure on all of the hinges the center of the two hinge parts is folded, so that creates a mountain. Okay, now with my fingers holding the paper at the top, I'm going to pinch and make sure all of those mountains created by where we uh, folded are going to come up. So I'll pull down with my fingers at the top and hold the paper at the bottom and sort of push up a little bit. And you'll see it will condense all the paper and you will have the little mountains um, come together. I'm going to pinch it, fold it back and forth to all five of the hinges. This helps train the paper the way we want it to. Helps the, helps the hinges move also. Then I'll pull it all together 
and then push it all down and grab my bone folder and burnish. Then I'll pinch them together again. We don't have any glue still. And I'll push it all up and burnish. You see, I'm holding it down with my hand. It takes a little bit of practice to get this. Okay, now you can definitely see the five hinges that we've created. Now I'm going to, I'm going to try to show you the hinges so you can see it. You see the five hinges, the four gussets. Hinge, 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 and there's the gussets. My shadow is really weird today. All right, and those on the side, I call the wings, just for lack of a better term. All right, so we're all ready, and now we're going to turn this over, and we're going to add some glue. So you want to add enough glue to be generous, but not so much that it drips out. So let's start with one, and I'm just going to go down the very bottom of that mountain and go a couple of times back and forth, trying to go towards the top, but I don't want it to seep out. And now I'm getting um, a surface to work on so I don't clean my, uh, don't, I don't mess my desk. And I'm just going to pinch this, especially towards the bottom, using the tips of my fingers to make sure that the bottom gets glue. I got some on my fingers and some is coming out, so I'm grabbing my cloth and wiping it. But you see how these two, the wing and the first gusset, come together nicely now. So let's do the second one. So same thing. Enough glue to hold it together, but not so much it's going to drip out. Hinges are one of the most important components of making a mini album. So you want it do it right. You don't want to skimp, but you don't want to go crazy. All right, now that I've shown you how to do those two, I'm going to put glue down on the remaining three. And I can do that in my environment. It's um, pretty humid out. It's not very hot. So this is not going to dry. If you're in an area where it dries very quickly, don't do that. You don't want to have to work with dry glue. But I'm pretty comfortable in my environment, so I can go ahead and finish the rest of these. Then I'm going to push them all forward and use my bone folder to burnish. I'm not hitting the edge. Well, there I am now. And when you get to the edge, double check to see if you have any glue coming out and if you do clean it up immediately. So I have some over on that side. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I just like this to be as clean as I can make it. So now I'm pushing the hinges and they're in good shape. All right, now we get to put it on the book. Isn't this pretty? So before um, we had put on this centerpiece and I have not scored it. So I'm taking my bone folder with a blunt edge, not anything sharp, and gently going down where the spine and the cover meet. And as I'm doing it, I'm lifting up the cover of the book. And this helps uh, the cover move a little better and we're going to burnish it once the cover is completely closed down onto the other side. And then we'll do it to the other side. So just gently find out where that meets. Rub your bone folder. My bone folder has a very blunt tip. Don't use anything sharp. And I'm just going to work it a little bit and then burnish and it has some movement to it but it's not wobbly anymore so I'm happy with how the cover is all right now I'm grabbing my hinge system and this is where I'm going to eyeball it and determine exactly where I want it to um, end up on the page so if you pull it all the way down, you'll see there is about an inch and a quarter at the top that is left over. So, you know, if there's an inch and a quarter, if I go up from the bottom half an inch, then I have three quarters, no, yeah, three quarters of an inch at the top. And that's how I want to do this because I will have 
two pages that are going to be open at the top and if I add any ribbon or anything I'll have some room. I also want to make sure that I know how much room I have from the last hinge to where the uh, the fold is and from the first hinge to the fold. And when I'm saying fold I'm talking about where the spine ends and the cover begins. Now you could have a quarter inch but you see how I had it and it was wonky. You want to make sure it is straight up and down. If you need to measure it you can measure it but most people don't. You can just eyeball it. So I want to have about a quarter of an inch, no half an inch, from the front cover to where the first hinge is and half an inch from where the last hinge is to the back cover. If you put it over with just a quarter inch to the front then you have all that room on the back and you could have maybe a gusseted pocket or a huge waterfall. But in this case, I'm not going to do that with this book. I don't need lots of room in the back. So I can just move it back over. And I'll be good. There we go. So half an inch on both sides and half an inch on the bottom. All right, now I'm going to take glue and I'm going to start from the crevice where the hinges are. That'll help hold that together. So I will fill that in from all five of the hinges. And then I want to put some at the top and not at the very top because I don't want it to seep out. And the bottom, again not at the very bottom, I'm about a quarter of an inch away. And then I'm just going to fill in on the underside of the gussets. You see how much glue I'm using? It's generous, but again, it's not going to be dripping. So I'll fill in that whole hinge area. And then I'm going to fill in a little bit of where the wings are. Not all of it, but I just want to make sure that we will get past where the um, spine of the book is. So I'm going about an inch on that right side and three quarters of an inch on the left. Now I, I know where it's going to land, so now I can turn it over, holding on to the wings. And eyeball it. I'm not pushing it down yet. I want to make sure it's straight. And then once I know where I want it, I'll just let it go. Again, I'm not pushing it, just let it go. So now I'm going to start with the center. Now there's not really one center, there's two center gussets. So I'll start with one using my finger and push from the top down to the middle and then from the bottom up. Just so the glue that's in there um, moves enough and holds it. If any glue seeps out, make sure you wipe it up. And then I'll go over to the gusset on the right, the immediate right, fold that hinge system towards the center, and use my finger again to burnish. When you move that hinge, you will see all of the paper moves. All, so see, I move that over and it all moved. It, it keeps the hinges together at the bottom of the hinge. If you do it a couple of times, you'll see what I mean. So I just want to keep pushing it down. And if you move the hinges towards the center, then it keeps them more compact. So I'm going to do the next one to the right. See, I'm showing you how the paper moves around. Push up from the bottom, push down from the top, just get that glue to move around. And, and they're adhering really well. Again, this artisan cardstock is fabulous. 
Okay, now I just need to do the very first hinge. I'll move it over to towards the right, start from the top. I think I'm noticing now the glue starting to dry, so I need to work a little quicker and do the one all the way to the right. And then uh, under the wings. I wonder if there's a technical term for that. All right, now my bone folder, of course, don't forget, my bone folder is a non-stick bone folder. So it doesn't cause my cardstock to have any of those shiny spots. Sometimes when you burnish with something metal or uh, hard plastic, you'll see a shiny spot. This doesn't do that. So I feel comfortable pushing up against the hinge and going onto the gusset. And then I will just make sure all of the glue is down. And again, going into the gusset gently. I, you know, I don't want to tear it. And here I'm pushing down, making sure that blue glue is down. Then I'll push all the hinges to one side. and move it over to the other side. I'm looking to see if any glue comes out, and if it does, of course, I'm gonna clean it up right away. And there we go. Don't those hinges look beautiful? I moved them all to the other side. I, I feel like you can go overboard in burnishing the hinge, but not too much. You, again, this is very important. You wanna make sure this gets a good stick. You wanna make sure the glue is distributed and you want to make sure that it's straight and it's where you want it to be. Then I will take my glue and just put it down on the wings and make sure they're completely adhered. Um, we're going to cover up these wings, but you just want to make sure that you get a good stick on them. A little glue coming out there. I'll take care of that before it makes a mess. All right, so there's that side, and then we'll do the other side. And we're done. All right, so two quick things we're going to do. I'm going to take my bone folder and burnish where the pages where the um, spine and the front cover and back cover meet. Same as we did before, but now we've got the hinge system on it. And I'm gonna take a pencil and put arrows on both sides so I don't forget which is the top and which is the bottom. And then let's work on the pages. So for the 12 by 10, we're gonna score at half an inch and at nine and a half. The 10 inch side is at the top. Then let's rotate. One more score, make sure it's good. Rotate and score at half an inch. All right, let me show you what you're going to do with this page. I'm going to use an X Acto and a ruler. You could use your paper trimmer or a pair of scissors, whatever you're most comfortable with. We're going to cut off this area and this area. And we're also going to put the uh, remaining flaps with a bevel. We're going to miter the corners. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a ruler and my X-Acto, straight edge, whatever. And it's got a new blade on it, so it's nice and sharp. So I'm just going to cut down right on the score line. And I'll do the same with the other side. And again, you're going to do this with page one, three, and five. So right down on the score line. And then you, I'm just going to use my X-Acto since it's in my hand to miter those corners. Scissors would do just as good. But just start from the score line and go down at a slight angle. And same for over here. 
and that'll take off that one other piece. Oops. Okay, I'm going to turn this over so I'm folding into the bump. Really doesn't matter with artisan cardstock, it's just a habit of mine. So I'm going to fold and make sure it's as straight as you can and burnish the edges here. And I'm going to fold in the tabs as well. And just make sure that they're straight. And that is the page. So it's, it's like a um, tube, but it's closed on the bottom. So this is not a pocket page. All right. I'm going to grab the book and we're going to put this in so I can show you. Oh, make sure you have the top up. All right, I'm not gluing the page together first. I'm going to put the, it right up to the hinge and add some glue. And when I say right up to the hinge, I'm going to put it so it doesn't go any further and then back it off by about a sixteenth of an inch. And then I'll fold the other part down, putting glue on both of the tabs on the top and bottom. And you'll see there is just going to be a sixteenth of an inch from the gusset to where the paper is. So I'll add glue and I try to keep it about an eighth of an inch away from the bottom. I can't draw a straight line with a pencil or with glue. I went a little too close here and it probably wouldn't have been big of a that big of a deal but I just wanted to wipe it up so I'll add some more glue and then I will make sure the page is centered top and bottom there's just an eighth of an inch allowance I'll push it down and then pull it just a little bit still keeping it even so it's not right down at the bottom push down that hinge so it adheres with the glue and then I'll add more glue to that tab on the top and the bottom. Sorry, you can't see on the top, but take my word for it. I'm putting glue up on the tab. And then I'll run a bead of glue down the side of the page. Oh, made a mess. Just right on the outside of the page. You don't need a lot. And then I will fold this in. And you want to sort of work quickly because if your page is not straight, the glue is still wet and it gives you some time to move it. But you can see, you can see it's pretty straight. See at the bottom, there is a quarter of an inch on the bottom uh, from top to bottom. It doesn't go wonky, so I'm pretty happy with that. I will go ahead and burnish. And you could glue the whole page if you want to. It will make it a little bit stronger, but it's really not necessary. It's not going to go anywhere. All right, now don't forget pages two and four we're going to do a little differently. So let me show you what we're going to do with page two. And page two and four is 12 by nine and a half. I'm cutting it now. I save all those scraps because you can use them for pockets, for uh, belly bands, for um, my die cuts. All right, I'm going to take the nine and a half side and put it at the top. And we're going to score at half an inch. And that's all you do with this one. And then rotate it and score at six inches. And we're going to do about the same thing as we did with this. Fold it in half at the six inch mark. And then we're going to cut that half of the, um, the tab. I'm just doing my miter cut now. And I will go down, making sure it's straight, go down 
on that one score line, miter the other side. I'm going to fold it in and burnish. And we're going to put this page on the same way as we did the last one. And now that you have one page on, you have something to uh, measure this page against. I, that's not the right terminology. When we turn, when we after we put the glue on, then you make sure that this is even with the page we've already put in. That's why it's really important. Your first page is perfect. Adding more glue. This is a big mini album for me. I usually don't do this large. So um, my camera just is not equipped to handle such a big picture. So I'm sorry if I go out of range of the camera. Okay. And of course the open area goes at the top. I shouldn't have, I should have said that before. This is where I'm making sure that they're lined up neatly. Once they're straight up and down, they should be exactly even. And once they are, then I'll go ahead and burnish. Burnish on that side. And then we'll continue on with the other pages. So page three, and I do start from the back as you noticed. So page three will be closed. Page two will be open at the top. And we will go on. So now let's look at the first page. Um, I'm sorry, the front inside cover. I love this picture, the graphic of those cats, but I'd rather a smaller pocket. So I'm going to use this one. And I just determined it's about four inches from the bottom. So my pocket is going to be four inches. And the page, uh, the page is six and a half. So what I want to do is cut down a piece of cardstock four and a half by seven and three eighths. I don't want to quite go to the edge because then it'll go over to where that fold is and I want to make sure that the page will fold. So I'm going to cut this piece of cardstock four and a half by, well, I'm just going to cut it down first of all to seven and three eighths, and then I'll cut it to four and a half, and then I can use the rest of this for the back inside cover because I will put another pocket in the back inside cover. Okay, I'm going to grab my scoreboard with the uh, seven and three side at the top, score it half an inch, and rotate. Score it half an inch with the short side at the top and rotate again with the long side at the top. Score it half an inch. And then I'll go ahead and grab some scissors and miter the corners. This time you go right across that X of where the two score lines meet. Same for here. And miter that corner. So I'm all done with that. Now I'm going to fold and burnish on the score lines. 
This really is a great bone folder. If you, I'll, I'll list it in the description box if I remember. Um, if you need a new bone folder, check out that Dress My Craft one. All right, so the measurements of the pattern paper for the inside or the outside of the pocket, the one with the kitty, it's six and an eighth by four, and the inside pocket is six and an eighth by eight. It's just the remaining part of the paper. And I inked around the edges, and you see I have that piece of a uh, die cut lace looking piece. And I'm going to glue that on top of the pocket before I put down the kitty cat paper. And I'm also going to use my corner punch with the scallop for the top of the pocket, just to add a little detail to that. So I'm going to do that here and put the paper on going to add glue to the bottom of the pocket, just the bottom, and I'm going to end up putting a piece of tape on the bottom just so that way when you're putting things in the pocket, it slides in easy. So I'll go ahead and do that and put the pattern paper on top and we're done with this part. All right, now let's go to page one. So I have a piece of cardstock that is six by seven and a half. I'll put the six inch side at the top and score at half an inch. And I also have my pattern paper. So I chose, this was uh, just one of the pages. Um, let me see if I can grab it to show you why. So there were these two um, beautiful images here. And if you go up just about four and a half inches, you get right to the top of her head and you get right to the bottom of her skirt. So a little bit less, maybe four and a quarter. So anyhow, I cut the paper like that. So I have this image for another time. And then this is going to be on the front, and that's going to be on the back. So that's the way that I cut the paper to utilize the gorgeous images um, on both sides. So I'm going to miter the corners, and I will fold and burnish on my score line. I inked around the edges of this one already, and I see that I probably needed to make the paper a little bit bigger, so I'm going to trim this down and ink around the edges. So I've trimmed that down. I'm going to put this gal. I'll put this gal down on the front, but I'm not going to do the back yet because I'm going to add magnets. I'm going to show you how I do magnets. And that is not even. Sometimes I just need to put it on the side. Oh, and then now I'm realizing that I wanted to put um, some die cut lace on that, so I'll keep that open. Okay, so what I've done is I used my die cut to cut out this lace, and then I took some walnut stain and inked it. In retrospect, maybe I should have inked the paper first, um, just because it's so delicate, but it worked. All right, now I am going to add a magnet. So I have the basic gray magnets. These are uh, the small size. You get 20 to a pack with those. And I'm going to use this pokey tool to get the uh, cover to the sticky. What's the word I'm looking for? It'll come to me. And I'm going to put that down. Now I will go ahead and put the back side of the paper on. So that'll 
go on like that. And look, my other sticky, my other magnet stuck to my scissors. But I will put that on there. And then I'm going to just center that on this page. So I will add glue to the half inch tab. And just make sure in this case there's a little more than half an inch from the top to the bottom. take my bone folder and burnish and then I will take the backing that's the word I'm looking for off of there and just fold this over push down on that magnet and then there we are and then I'll cover this page with some other paper I think I might use this side of it yeah, I'll just go ahead and continue using the same that's the back of this paper. So I will just use that side. It's got some of these flowers, which there's flowers there. So what I'll probably do is put this top piece there, ink around the edges, and then we've got the page. All right, so I've cut the paper. I've inked around the edges. I added just a couple of dots of ATG on this page and I'm just going to lay this down at this point um, I am not sure if I'm going to have any extra paper left and I might make a pocket here or even add another flap so until I know for sure I'm just going to lay that down temporarily and uh, move on to the next page and I will continue to do that with the book, just laying some of these pieces down temporarily. And that just gives me an opportunity to add more if I want to. So let's go to the back of page one. Alrighty, we're going to start out fairly easy for the back of page one. We're going to have a pocket with an insert in the pocket. So I have cut the cardstock to seven by three and a half. And we're going to simply put the long side at the top, score it half an inch on the short side, rotate, score it half an inch, rotate, score it half an inch. And then the insert, we are going to score at six and a half. And I'm going to move that out of the way and grab my scissors. So let us miter on the corners for the pocket there there and then I don't know if I explain this but there is an X by where we uh, uh, scored and you just go simply through the center of that X now I tend to go a little bit more on a slant instead of straight across because that way when you're folding these pieces don't touch and so that helps reduce bulk now ultimately it's not that big of a deal but you know when you start getting a chunky album and you're running out of room to put your photos or whatever then you think wow i wish i had saved some room i'm going to just erase that chalk right at the top just so it doesn't uh, show under the paper and then I just folded that like that and I'm going to take and put one of my um, die cut borders here which will look pretty or or I might just put it on top of the pocket I am not sure yet but let's put the pocket on so I'm going to just take the glue and put it on the bottom tab. And 
and put that on the bottom of the back of page one. And I'm going to go a little bit to the left side of the paper just because I don't want it to hit the fold. So there we go with that. And then just to make sure that things don't get hung up, I'm grabbing some tape. I probably pulled off more than I needed. And I'm just going to put that right there on the bottom of the pocket. And that'll help when things go in, it doesn't get hung up on the pocket. And now that I've done that, I have to cut off this little piece. I can make a whole mini album, but I can't peel off a little teeny piece of tape. Okay. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and put this up. You could wait till you get your pattern paper, but it doesn't make a difference to me. And then I'll just go ahead and do that. And now, in retrospect, I'm thinking, yeah, I'll just add the little lace edge to here. So it'll sit right on the edge of there and look beautiful. And that is it for the back of page one. Okay, now we're going to work on the front of page two. And I label my pages uh, F or B, front or back. So 2F is the front of page two. And for this, I have cut two pieces of cardstock, eight and a quarter by three and a half. And we're going to score each of these with the short side at the top at half an inch. And I'll fold and miter. Here's my phone folder. This is a simple page. Um, but the paper is very cute. It sort of lends itself to this. And you also may have noticed that I have put this uh, die cut lace on the edges of the pages. Now some I just tack down with some temporary tape. Um, other like this one I have glued. All right, and I am going to put these two flaps. I'm going to center them top to bottom since it's eight and a quarter and the page is taller. Is it eight and a quarter? Anyway, I'm going against the edge of the first page. Yeah, that makes sense. So we have that one, and put one on the right hand side. And you don't need to have the lace if you don't want. I just wanted to have a little extra uh, texture to my pages. All right, and line it up, of course, with that first one. down I find it's not straight I'll straighten that out I cut out of the cut apart sheet this little 
pretty tag, I took my uh, scallop paper edger and just gently, just a little itty bit, scalloped the edges and did the same with another scrap piece of paper. It was the back of this ruler piece. And then I inked around the edges. Now this one, the first one, uh, has the detailing to it. I also cut a piece about a quarter of an inch bigger and did the same scallop around the edge. I'm going to glue this tag onto that one piece. Just so there's... Um, just so you can see the detail. Now I also did cut four pieces of paper. It was from the same sheet. And what I think I'm going to do, what I know I'm going to do, is put, I'm trying to decide what, we'll put these on the front and then this will open up to this beautiful page. And I'm going to put these on the inside. I think I'm going to uh, use that same scallop punch and scallop the edges and ink around the edges. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to adhere the inside pages, but don't do the outside ones yet. All right, so I have glued the front onto this the little piece for that tag for the front and I also have put uh, two magnets I have adhered one magnet onto the cardstock and there is its matching pair I've also adhered the paper on the left hand side but not on the right and the paper on the inside doesn't that look cute that is all ready to go so what I want to do is glue this onto the um, left hand side centering it I'm not going to glue it all the way up to here because I want to slip in its corresponding piece so I'm going to just glue it a little bit and again I'll center it so there we go with that actually Okay, so there's that piece. Now I'm going to take off the backing of this one magnet. Push that down. All right, come on, magnet. Okay, so I've got that down. Now I'm going to put this onto the right hand side. And again, I've used my corner punch with the scallop for the four sides of the two pieces on the front and the four sides of this main piece, but I only did the outside edges on the, the door, the inside door. I guess we'll call it a door. All right, now we've got this. I'm gonna cut it a little bit so it'll fit. I will add glue. And push that in. And add a little more glue to here. Of course, now I realize that this magnet stuck, so I have to fix that. To fix it, I just had to peel off this back, stick the magnet on, and re-glue that. But there we go. So there is that page. Opens like that. 
You could put a photo right here and that would make a beautiful spot for a photo because there's a frame around it. It is, of course, a gorgeous piece of paper, but there you go. You also could put photos on the inside of these too. You know, if you had some small pictures. So there is that. All right, let's look work on the back of page two. So I have cut one piece that's five and a quarter by 10 and four pieces that are four and a quarter by six and three quarters. The five and a quarter by 10, we're going to score on the long side at half an inch and then the two short sides at half an inch. And then the four and a quarter by six and three quarters, we're going to score all of those on the short side. So put the long side at the top of your scoreboard and score at half an inch. And a piece that's one and a half by three Put the three inch side at the top and score a half an inch. So what we're going to do is uh, fold and miter on this long piece. Don't worry about the smaller pieces. Grab the scissors. We are going to have a long pocket with an opening towards the outside of the book. So in this case, the opening is going to be on the left hand side. And we're going to have a small waterfall on top of that. And we might as well assemble it before we put it in the book, but you could do it either way. So this side will go towards the spine. This will go towards the opening. Alrighty, I am going to start at the top and I've uh, fold, folded uh, these I'm going to center these because if I have it too close to the edge it's going to be right on the um, right near the the hinge the spine whoops take off the top my little glue so I am going to make sure I start straight so I'll put number one and line it up the very top I'm going to grab a spacer real quick. And that is pretty straight, which is good because the glue's already dried. And then I will take the next one. Once you've gotten the first one on, and everything should go fairly smooth after that. And I will line this up right to the bottom of the last one. And what we're going to do is adhere this one and a half by three inch piece. I'm going to see where it's going to end up. 
and we're going to adhere it to the last flap. So you can see I'm pushing it there, making sure it's centered. And then we will add a magnet here and that will stay down there. So we'll go ahead and put it on the page. And again, I like to have put the glue on the long flap. And I'm going to put that down on the page right up next to the edge of the page near the spine. Make sure it's at the bottom. We'll burnish on that. And then we'll add some tape just in case we have anything go into that pocket. It won't get hung up on that fold. This time somehow I cut the exact right amount. I'll burnish that down so you see nothing will get hung up. Then we can add glue to this side. Close this. All right, so we've got a pocket here, and then we've got waterfall. And as I said, we'll put a magnet here. but you can still lift up the final page and still put a picture down there. All right, we will work on that and then we'll work on this one. All right, for the front of page three, we're gonna take a piece of cardstock five and a half by nine and a quarter. I've already scored on the short side at half an inch and then we will fold and miter or miter and fold, either or. And I've already used a stub punch just to add some detail to the bottom. And I will go ahead and put this on the front of page three, lining it up at the top, keeping it about a quarter of an inch away really centering it on the page, which is about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the page. And we'll burnish that. And so there is the flap. Go ahead and add a magnet to the front of page three and to the back of the flap. And we're done with that page. All right, for 3B and 4F, we are going to have two different kinds of belly bands. For the 3B, we have a piece of cardstock that's 2 by 10. Score one side at half an inch and the other side at nine and a half. And then on a 4F, you're going to have two pieces that are two and a half by four and a half. And both of these you're going to score on the short side at half an inch. And let us just mater. And then we'll burnish on the score lines. And we're going to have magnets on the one on 4F. We won't need it for 3B. A 
of course, the glue gets stuck. So we're just going to center this on the page. Try to burnish. Alrighty, and same with the other two. We'll center it on the left side and the right side. And that is it for 3B and 4F. Now we'll work on 4B and 5F. All right, this one's going to be fun. For 4B and 5F, we're going to take a piece of 6x6 six six cardstock and score half an inch on all four sides. That's pretty simple, right? Then we're going to take our paper trimmer and we are going to score from one corner to the other. So score, or score, cut. Cut from one corner to the other. And then let's miter the edges on this. So we're, you're mitering the edges on a triangular piece. You sort of have to go down and make another triangular piece. And then miter the corner, same as you would normally do to go across the X. And there we go with that. Now let's fold and burnish on the score lines. And so we're going to have opposing matching corner pockets. So I'm going to add glue to the tabs on both sides. And one will go on the bottom of 4B on the bottom left corner. And one will go on the bottom right corner of 5F. Simple but effective. We'll move on to the next page. Okay, for the back of page five, we are nearing the end here. I have a piece five and seven eighths by three and a half. We are going to put the short side at the top and simply score at half an inch. Five and seven eighths by seven and three quarters, same thing. Well, long side at the top, actually. Score at half an inch. And the six and three eighths by four and a half, we're going to put the long side at the top and score it half an inch. We are going to miter 
on the corners and we are going to fold and burnish. But you knew that was going to happen, didn't you? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to take the smaller, <coughs> excuse me, the five and seven eighths by three and a half. And it's shorter than the six inches because I don't want to get too close to the, where the fold of the page is. So put it close to the left hand side. I'm making sure it's even on the bottom. And the five and seven eighths by seven and three quarters. Same thing, I made it just a little bit smaller than the page itself. But this is going to go to the top and make sure it's even with the first flap we put down. And then the six and three eighths by four and a half. I'm going to put that about in the center of the page over to the left hand side. So we will have the flap that closes here and then that opens and then we have that. And let's go ahead and work on the back inside cover. So we'll need two pieces, six and five eighths by eight and seven and five eighths by five and a half. The seven and five eighths by five and a half, we're gonna score on two short sides and one long side. We're gonna have a pocket with a flap. I guess I'm a creature of habit because I seem to have this on more back pages than anything else. I just like the idea that if you're putting pictures in a mini album and you have leftover photos or memorabilia, you might have tickets, um, or just photos that didn't fit in the rest of the album, this is a great place to put them. Sometimes I put a flap or a pocket um, that's got room for expansion of like an accordion pocket and sometimes I just just have a plain pocket in this plate case it's just a plain pocket I am rounding the corners on that larger flap I always feel it looks like a flap if you've got the edges uh, rounded or have it some kind of an edge punch but that is just my personal preference. You don't have to round it if you don't want. Of course, if you round this, you have to round all the papers you put on it. But normally that's not a big deal. All right, I'm gonna add some glue to the bottom tab and put this, keeping it closer to the right-hand side than the left. And as I'm putting this in, uh, I'm not happy with it. I feel like it's going to be um, coming over to the fold. Did I measure that right? Oh, you know what? It should have been seven and three eighths. It should have been an eighth inch smaller, not an eighth inch larger. So yeah, even designers make mistakes. I'm just going to go over this side. I'm putting this edge there and I'm folding at half an inch. And that probably means this is too big too. No, that's okay, six and a half. Um, but I might change it. So even though I've got two fold lines, two score lines on this, it's not a big deal. 
I mean, you're going to cover it with paper anyhow. I am going to just re miter this corner. And now again, add glue. I pulled off the glue when I was realizing the error of my ways. So now again, keep it justified to the right. Keep it as far to the right as possible. And again, the reason the reason for that confusion is because it was right on the fold of the um, the back cover, and it was going to keep the cover from closing completely. Now I'm looking at I'm thinking, well, there's more than enough room now, but that's right. I'd rather have too much room than not enough. Oops, you know what I'm forgetting to do? tape that little tape trick and why is it when one thing goes wrong everything goes wrong I got glue here I don't think it's even luckily the glue is not adhered yet so I have time to fix it Including the tape. I don't know why it came out wonky, but it did. Maybe the piece was not cut straight enough. I am not sure. Form no fell. It'll be fine. And then let's check out this flap. Yeah, it is a little bit too big. I'm going to cut it down a little bit. I'd rather cut it down now than have problems later. So this will go at the top. It needs to be even with the pocket, which it is, and it is beautiful. So now I am going to decorate. If there are any things as I decorate that I feel I need to address, I will show you. And um, otherwise, I'm going to decorate it. I mean, when I put on paper, if it was something funky then I let you know about it otherwise I'm just going to decorate it as normal and you've already done a walkthrough so this is this is it so I thank you so much for joining me with this tutorial please don't forget to like and if you're not a subscriber go ahead and subscribe it really helps me out with my analytics and all that stuff so that is what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fabulous day.